All right, folks, so in our last video, um, we talked about uh, in the Henry system of classification how to do the first step, which is to determine the primary. And if you remember, the primary dealt with um, figuring out where the whorls in uh, our 10 fingerprints come from. And uh, the primary is the first step in Henry, and it's going to be recorded here uh, in this uh, third position uh, in the Henry classification. Well, the next step is to do what's called uh, the secondary. So we have primary, well, that makes sense, that's first. Secondary, well, that makes sense, it's second. And so the secondary just goes to the right of the primary, so it goes in this position here. So if we're looking at our, our boxes uh, for our Henry, we have the primary in this third column, and then the secondary goes just in this fourth column, which is just to the right of the primary. And just like with the primary, there's going to be a uh, numerator which is something on the top and then there's going to be a denominator on the bottom but you'll notice something different about the secondary versus the primary and that is that the value or the the digit that's in the secondary location is a letter as opposed to a number like we had with the primary so let's talk about what the secondary is uh, the secondary classification really only deals with two fingers it's finger number two and finger number seven which are the two index fingers finger number two is the right index finger and finger number seven is the left index finger uh, and the secondary consists of only capital letters so you're going to have one capital letter in the numerator uh, which is going to be from the index finger on the right hand so the number two finger and then you're going to have a capital letter from the left index finger number seven which is going to be in your denominator so the secondary uh, numerator is the pattern that's found in figure number two which is the right index finger and the denominator is the pattern found in figure number seven which is the left index finger. So if we look at this fingerprint uh, card here, uh, we can see that uh, there is a secondary here, and we can see it's a capital U, capital U, and that is because when we look at finger number two and finger number seven on the card, we can see that they're both ulnar loops. We can see that the dash is here. So what we do is we would write a capital U, one U up top, indicating that the number two fingerprint is an ulnar loop, and one capital U down below because the number seven finger is also an ulnar loop. If we look at this fingerprint card, we can see that uh, the secondary, so here is our primary, 725, indicating where the worlds are located. And then our secondary, which is just to the right of that, has a capital U. That tells me that the number two finger is an ulnar loop. And then we see there's a capital R indicating that the number seven finger, which is the left index finger, index finger is a capital R. Uh, just a quick reminder, remember when we were talking about fingerprint notation, remember we said that uh, when we have a radial loop we put a, an uppercase R if it's the index finger or we use a lowercase R in any other finger. Same thing with uh, plain arches. We would put an uppercase A if it was the index finger, but notice here we have a plain arch. Uh, it's actually written as a lowercase A. It's what we call a small letter, which we'll talk more about when we talk about the subsecondary, which comes after the secondary. So the secondary is pretty easy. Uh, you're going to either write a U, an R, so U for an ulnar loop, a capital R for a radial loop. If it's a tended arch, it would be a capital T. If it's a plain arch, it would be a capital A. If it's a whorl of any sort, all you do is put a capital W. It doesn't matter if it's a central pocket whorl, a double loop whorl, uh, an accidental whorl, it's just a capital W for whorl. So here, again, we see another example of a secondary. In this case, we have a whorl. Again, it doesn't matter that it's a plain whorl. We just write capital W, indicating it's a whorl in the number two finger. And then we have an ulnar loop, so we write an uppercase U uh, in the secondary spot uh, on the denominator. So the, the secondary is really easy to do. All right, the subsecondary. Subsecondary, uh, in terms of our classification, goes just to the right of the secondary. So if we back up, here was our primary. Again, that deals with where are the whorls. Here's our secondary. That deals with what pattern is present in the two index fingers. And then the subsecondary goes just to the right of the secondary. So it's these, in, these uh, alphanumeric characters here. And it deals with the 2, 3, and 4 finger and the 7, 8, and 9 fingers. Um, and so, again, it goes just to the right of the secondary. Now, the subsecondary, uh, the rules applying to it. Again, it's only concerned with the middle three fingers on each hand. So basically, it's concerned with the two index fingers, the two middle fingers, and the two ring fingers. So basically, fingers 2, 3, and 4. 
and then finger seven, eight, and nine. The numerator, so the, the, the letters on top, are going to deal with fingers two, three, and four. And then the denominator is going to be concerned with fingers seven, eight, and nine. And the subsecondary, really all we're concerned with is if we have loops or whirls. If we have any other sort of fingerprint, like a plain arch or a tenet arch, uh, then we're actually not going to have a subsecondary. Um, now, the subsecondary, uh, it's either going to be, uh, consists of I's, M's, or O's, all capitals. So capital I's, capital M's, capital O's. If the fingerprint is a whirl, then you simply bring up the tracing. Uh, if the fingerprint is a loop, then we're going to refer to our cheat sheet. I'm going to show you that in a second. Now, if uh, number two or number seven fingers, so the two index fingers, if they're plain or tenet arches, instead of putting an I, an O, or an M, we put a dash in the appropriate spot uh, in the subsecondary. Now, here's where it gets a little complicated with subsecondary. If there is what's called a small letter to the right of the index fingers, then we don't have a subsecondary. There's no such thing as a subsecondary anymore. However, we are still going to note the locations of those small letters uh, as part of the secondary. So small letters being if we have any if we have any prints in the two, three, or four area or the seven, eight, or nine area that are uh, plain arches or tented arches, then we're not going to have a subsecondary anymore. Um, but we're still going to note the location of those uh, in our Henry. All right. So here's our cheat sheet. Um, Remember before when we were doing uh, primaries, we were referring to these numbers here uh, in the top right-hand corner. Uh, but remember, for the subsecondary, we're going to deal with fingers 2, 3, and 4, and 7, 8, and 9. And we're going we're gonna to use these values that are right here in the middle of those boxes on our cheat sheet. Um, because those are going to be used if we have loops instead of whorls. All right, so let's, let's look at this fingerprint uh, card here, and let's, let's figure out the subsecondary for this card. Uh, we already know that the for this card that it must have all worlds because we have a 32, 32 primary. Uh, for the secondary, we can see world and world. That's why we have world, world. Now, for the subsecondary, again, we're dealing with fingers 2, 3, and 4, and then 7, 8, and 9. Now, if it's worlds, it's really easy. All we do is we bring up the tracing. So, for example, look at number 2. We can see it's an outer tracing. Finger number 3 is an inner tracing. And finger number four is an inner tracing. So for the numerator, we would put O for outer tracing, which is number two, I for inner tracing for number three, and then an I inner tracing for number four. And then we go down to the bottom. Again, fingers seven, eight, and nine. These are all whorls, so all we do is bring up the tracings. So we have M, median tra meeting tracing, O for an outer tracing, and I. So we have M, O, and I. So that's our sub-secondary. So that's pretty easy. So when it's whorls, all you do is just bring up the tracing. So we go... O up here, I we bring up here, I up here, and then on the bottom, M, O, and then I. So whorls, it's pretty easy. All right, what if we have a combination of whorls, but we also have some loops? All right, again, if it's a whorl, it's really easy. All we do is bring up the tracing. So O, we bring up the tracing. Here on the number four finger, we have inner, so we bring up the tracing. But here, notice we have a loop for the finger number three. How did we get this O right here? Well, that's going to come from our cheat sheet. So let's look at our cheat sheet here. What the cheat sheet tells us is, uh, with our fingerprint, if it's a loop, what we do is we look at its ridge count. And if the ridge count is between 1 and 9, we put an I. If the ridge count is 10 or over, we put an O. That's for finger number 2. For finger number 3, it's between 1 and 10, we put an I. If it's 11 and over, we put an O. So what we do then is if we have loops, so going back to this fingerprint card, so notice that this is an ulnar loop. It has a ridge count of 16. So we look at our cheat sheet. So that's from finger number 3. We can see that it's 11 or over, so we're going to put an O. So notice, because it was 16, it was 11 or over, we put an O. So we, put, we moved the tracing up because there was a whirl. We used our cheat sheet to figure out that a ridge count of 16 is an O, and then we put an I up here. So then going down here, okay, looking down here, we have an ulnar loop. So we have a ridge count of 12, so we look at our cheat sheet. Looking at our cheat sheet, if it's between 10 and over, then we're going to use an O. So when we go back, okay, 10 and over, we're going to put an O there. This is a whirl, so we simply bring up the tracing, I. Oh, we have another loop here, so we do is we look at the, at the ridge count. We have a ridge count of 12, so we go to our... Sheep, if it's between 1 and 13, then we put an I. 
So since it's between 1 and 13, then we put an I up there. So that's how you do the subsecondary, which is really easy to do when you have whorls and loops. Now, this is where the subsecondary can be a little bit confusing. And what if you have small letters? If you remember when we were talking about classification notation, right, whenever you have let's say a radial loop that is in the index finger we write a capital R so it's an uppercase letter but if it's in one of the other fingers like for example the middle finger the ring finger the middle or the the pinky finger we use a lowercase letter so for example here the plain arch is written with a lowercase a this tenet arch is written with a lowercase t All right so the rule about subsecondary is whenever there is a small letter so a tented arch or a plain arch or a radial loop to the right of the index finger. So if there is a small letter anywhere to the right of either of these two fingers, then we don't have a subsecondary. So since we have a plain arch and a tenet arch to the right of this fingerprint, we no longer have a subsecondary. But what we do though is we note the location of those um, small letters in the area where our subsecondary would have been. So we still have a primary, 725 indicates the location of our whorls. We can see that this is an ulnar loop. We can see that this is a radial loop. And then what we need to do is we need to note the location of those small letters. We'll put a dash in, in any spot where there would have been a, a whorl or loop. So we can see that the, down here there was a radial loop and then there was either an ulnar loop or a whorl, which is indicated by the dash, and then we put our two small letters in. Since there are no small letters to note over here, we didn't. We just left them blank there. Another example, again, uh, looking here, we can see here's our primary, 20 and 27, because we can see that there's a lot of whorls in this fingerprint. We can see that the two index fingers are whorls, whorl, whorl. When we go to do our secondary, our subsecondary, rather, so that was our secondary, whorl, whorl. Looking at our subsecondary, we're looking to see, are there any small letters? Oh, yeah, we see that there's a small letter here to the right of our two index fingers. So that means we can't have a subsecondary. But what we are going to do is we're going to note its location. So we can see that there's at least one finger between the index finger and that small letter, indicated by the dash. So I can see that there is the index finger, which is a whorl. There's some other fingerprint. And then there is a small letter as the A. So there's not really a subsecondary, but we do uh, use a little bit of notation to indicate the location of small letters, and that's how we take care of that with the subsecondary. Here's one last example, again with subsecondary. First, we can see here's our primary, 30 over 18, which is going to tell us where the whorls are located. Our secondary, you can see that there's a whorl in the right index finger. We can see that there's a radial loop in the left index finger. So the next thing, when we go to do our subsecondary, we do see that there are, is a small letter to the right of one of these fingers so that we no longer have a subsecondary, so we don't use the I's, the O's, and the M's. What we do, though, is we note the location of that small letter relative to the index finger. So we have our W for our primary, and then we can see that there's a dash dash, which means that there's two fingerprints before I get to my small letter A. So that's how we do the subsecondary. It's probably the most confusing of, of the parts of the Henry system, but that's how you do a, a subsecondary. All right, in the next video, we're going, to follow, we're going to cover the last three parts of the Henry classification, which are the major, the key, and then the final.